But we can go fell and nakal be secure or sank for that and key. So and it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the Signs of Success story series. Now we're going to be looking at some incredible stories of amazing South Africans who've really stood out in their industries and have um, assigned to their success. And we want to find out from them how did you get there? How did you define the success? Um, it's going to be an interesting time of just finding out how they journeyed through. And it gives me great pleasure today uh, to introduce one of our beautiful leading um, uh, pioneers here in South Africa. Uh, he is anchored in talent, tenacity, and really a well thought through um, career and path. And maybe the big question that we have for him today is, did you think it through or did it just kind of all fall in place? It gives me great pleasure to welcome Slicker. Hello, 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 hello. How are you doing? I'm good. I feel like there should have been like a pop, 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 pop in the background. Post production job. Come on, do your thing. Post production job. You know? <laughs> Did you plan it? Is, is this how you how you saw it mapping out? No, I don't even know what I'm doing here. Really? <laughs> <laughs> how you got here? Maybe let's like, let's do how you got here. And when I say I don't even know what I'm doing here, it's like it's it's a sense of you know if you had to look at everything from the from the smallest thing that happens around you, you yeah. like you can't. You cannot like say, hey, you know, I actually had planned that I'd yeah. be here. Yeah. But like what I live off is always um, trusting the voice in my head. Okay. You know, if, um, the voice in my head creates the rest of the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, we, people say that we came to change the world, but I don't want the world to change me. So yeah. I constantly try to not let the world change me so I can be who I am. Yeah. It just makes it harder. Yeah. But like, I was about to say, it, it probably is a, a bit of a, an uphill battle because the world has got almost like a blueprint. And, and oftentimes when we see successful people and very successful people, you almost think there was a plan A, plan B, and one of the plans worked. And oftentimes when you ask, how did you get here? Somebody goes, yo, man, you know? I took it day by day, <laughs> and this is how I got here. I, I want to know how we moved from Sia to Slicker. Um, that's a Leondale thing, you know. They called me Slicker back then. Oh, Leondale, but I'm going to be girl zone, but too. They were big at the time, and they're still big, right? They're still big right now. <laughs> no. So it was a Leondale thing. Yeah, it was a Leondale. I used to have like a uh, pomade, you know, DIY pomade, and I, I'd always make my hair like. It's you down calling it nicely. What is it called? Pomade. Keep pomade. Ah, uh, asleek, keep pomade. When you say pomade, you say pomade. Ah, when you say pomade, ladies, keep pomade, babe. No, lipo chains, lemon chains, so pomade. You know what I mean? So, oh. you know, we had, I had a pomade, and when I'd be at the basketball court, everybody would go, oh, you're slick. I wouldn't have curls on the side, I'd let it sleep on the side. Oh, okay. So it was slick, but the curls would be at the top. Exactly where I'm balding today, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It shows the journey. Yeah, you <laughs> know what I mean? you've come. I don't know how I got here. <laughs> oh, now we know. There's a, to the there's, a, there's a science to the hair. I mean, a bit of age there. When did you fall in love with music? I, I want to be very honest. Like, for me, everything chose me. Sure. Everything that I chose, I, had a, I, I was unhappy. Unhappy in a sense of it doesn't matter whether there's money in it, maybe it's the people, but everything that I chose. I'm, I'm unhappy. Um, he, everything chose me. Like, and I'm saying from the detail of the woman that I'm with right down to the work, everything has chosen me in life. Yeah. I never went to music, it came to me. Sure. You know? Now you're in it, you are part of a movement. The first CD I ever owned was Squatter Cam. Oh man, shout out. Yeah, and I'm not just saying that, like for real, we got it as a Christmas gift. Um, uh, and, and it was for both me and my sister. By the way, my parents, we've got to talk about that because they gave us money to buy, but mm, yeah, well, not quite. You, you have squatter, you, you have camp. camp yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and resonated, it, it's the soundtrack uh, to our youth. It, it was just something that just felt like home. You're part of this huge movement. You guys are traveling everywhere. You're getting on stages, arenas. People are screaming back at you, loving you, saying your verses back. What's going on in your mind? When you're on stage and, and somebody's singing your lyrics with you, is that the definition of success for you at that time? At that time, the definition of success is me remembering my lyrics while I'm <laughs> singing. <laughs> because that's a real thing. You know, real guys, thing. forgetting lyrics is a real it's thing. It's a real thing. You know, I'm, I'm, real on, thing. I'm on that stage, I'm like, I don't believe it. But you see, I feel like with hip hop, you guys can get away with it because you go, na 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 na. Uh. Yeah, yeah. If you're yeah. singing bass, I can't just cut a note yeah, because I yeah. forgot a word. Yeah. I think success is actually knowing what are your things and actually being able to be patient to wait for them to develop and mature. Yeah. And also being mature enough to know that like 
there are things in the world that are definitely not yours. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, are, that weren't, you, you might understand them, but I think for me, so even, so for me, it wasn't even like the, the people singing the lyrics. Yeah. I never understood that was my place at the time. I was always conflicted even when I was successful because I never knew, because how could your parents buy you a Squatter Camp CD, yeah. which is a rap CD, when other kids that are rapping, their parents don't even know those kids are rapping. <laughs> So like, you know, when you start seeing that like it's bigger than you, it's the hands that like your work literally moves into yeah. and the people who actually interact and engage. So yeah. if like a group that's cursing is literally acknowledged by a family, shout out to your folks, yeah. you know. Yeah, I don't think they knew. Yeah, 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 shout out, you know. I think we pitched more, yeah. Uh, they, yeah, uh, and they probably thought more halalang, but in this more halalang. <laughs> but, but you know what happens though, the universe also gives you that song because mm. like, you know, you don't create the song yourself. The universe gives you the song, mm. right? So the universe gives you the song to literally part, to, to, to pave a way yeah. that you don't even have power to. Sure. So I think that like success is actually in my view and I'm because I'm going through a lot of things right now in my yeah. life, you know, across the board from personal, professional, the work. But I think success is letting go and letting know that like it's happening for you, not against you, even if it feels like it's against you in the moment. Yeah. In the context of, of South Africa, you know, really growing up in African homes, you know, there's a standard of what success is, that this is a young, black, successful man. Have you ever felt that you fitted that? Well, you know, I was lucky or unlucky, however you want to see it. My parents literally couldn't take me to what they call like tertiary university. They couldn't help me finish my studies there. Yeah. So I, the pressure was removed from me to, in fact, my mother would go as far as she thought that I was going to end up in jail, right? Yeah. So the pressure for me was removed to be anything in our household that is called a success. Sure. So when I did music, I was making music under no pressure. I was going to be living in my mother's house. As long as you need to. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, but like, it, and once again, you know, I could go ahead and go, my parents couldn't afford, but like I probably became better off than a person who went to school because that was my path. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. So part of success is also, um, you could have a gripe, but your life is okay. Yeah. And you, could, you must acknowledge that, well, some people's path is going to school. You know, but yours, Siabonga, specifically, was not that. Yeah. So let go, because, you know, when you grow up, obviously, as a, when you're going through that with your parents, you do have a little bit of a gripe, you know, yeah. like, why couldn't y'all afford to take me to Look school? at all the other guys. Look at all the other. Yeah. I would have those moments where I'm, like, tearing up, like, in my, at my house, like, damn, I went to a whole multiracial. You remember? So yeah. I went to a private school before, before like, um, it was a thing. before black kids could even go to private schools through some type of. So I had foresight. I was going to school with like with white children who were going on holiday to the world, blah blah. blah. Yeah. And I thought that you know, if my I'll probably get there one day because you know I'm already in. So already like now I'm as good as every other kid who never had the foresight. Sure. That was the most defeating thing for yeah. me. You that like. To spare one like square minus one because, minus, yeah. because the kid that has foresight doesn't know doesn't that doesn't have foresight doesn't know doesn't what they're know. losing sure. me i know what is out there in the world yeah. but my parents can't take me there they can't take you further you know what i mean yeah. so i'm living with that sure. you know so someone else is easy kind of like oh man you know we're chilling man i mean so ploma, you know, it's not even gap years. Mm, hi, it's like, yeah. It's just fun, you know, we're doing what we're doing. But you got to say it again, it's not gap year. It's not a gap year, nigga. It's life. This right? is not a gap year, this is a whole gap life, you understand? Gap so life. you go through that and you have the context of what it means, you know, and then you see your peers who actually like go to secondary, who actually like, now they're starting their jobs, now they like, now they like getting like their first car, or whatever. Sure. You, I'm going through this. You're in relationships yeah. with people who like girls. I'll pick you up. Well, girls <laughs> who literally like go, oh, the problem is not you, the problem is, is me because they're growing, right? Oh. So you're going through all this, and these are girls who you are you are in that like college that you couldn't complete. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. So unlike someone who never experienced that, who like never experienced that girl who was cool with the who, who was cool with her, that girl probably wasn't cool with that guy in any case. In any case. So I'm experiencing that and it's hitting me harder than anybody else, sure. right? But then 
So you can be, you can hold a gripe, mm. but then you see how life shapes yeah. and part of success is letting go of your own gripe, it's healing yourself. Yeah. When did you give yourself, it's probably when and how did you give yourself permission to move? And what I mean by that is, I'm just, I'll use myself as an example. I'm a child star, children's television, then I get into music. And that transition was so hard to almost reintroduce myself to say, I'm a little bit older. Yeah. <laughs> I sing now, yeah. you know, and then you move from that and I'm in corporate. Yeah. And it's almost like you're not allowed to do that, yeah. right? You're not allowed to move. So when and how did you give yourself permission to go, yo, y'all know me yeah. as rap life? but there could also be uh, a business life. There could also be another side of me that doesn't embody this picture or perception you have of me. And I'm gonna have to move along. Whether you're coming or not, I'm gonna have to move along. When did you get to that place? Be, be more forgiving to people who literally like have a conventional reality. Sure. If you've literally like built your life out of ac academia yeah. and you've literally grown your, your corporate life in a conventional way, right? When you kind of meet water, like, which like, you know, we water, you know, yeah. <laughs> you first go, but wait, aren't you just an artist? Mm. But wait, aren't you just an influencer? Yeah. Aren't you just a presenter? Yeah. But like you water, right? Yeah. So my thing is that like some people's lives is built of convention. Mm. And they've got more, even the corporate people, they've got more. Yeah. Because the convention that has been built is maybe what it's just, what life is saying is that this is where you're going to eat yeah. in convention. And grow. And grow. Yeah. But, but you've got the rest of life to be part of life. Got you. You know what I mean? So like when you start like mixing where you're eating and what life is, that's when you kind of start missing life. Sure. So part of defining is also a constant search for happiness. Yeah. So for Tina, almost like if you could use a path, like, you know, yeah. like because we are constantly defining ourselves, we almost do like this internal patlering of <laughs> reset. Gonjo, what do I want? Yeah. But if you are in conventional growth, you never have to patter, like in that sense, yeah. because your business's growth determines that. They, they, they've already told you that you'll be junior, you'll be mid, you'll be senior, you'll be manager, you'll be this, you'll you'll be bored. You know what I mean? They've already given you the retire. So, so mm. you don't have to think of your of your tiers of growth. But when you literally like almost like a, an, a I always call it a universal freelancer. Yeah. When you're a freelancer, you constantly have to listen. Other people can always see you as something but it's up to you to give yourself a chance to be more. Yeah. You know? Once you've given yourself a chance to be more, it seems like it's working out. When it fails, how do you get back up again? It never fails and it never works out if it's truly who you are. Sure. It's just a constant journey, mm. you know? And um, some things make money, some things make... I mean, I enjoyed my life when I was an artist, I was on stage, but I'm making more money as than I was when I was an artist. Sure. I can't say that I'm having as fun as, as much fun as I was when I was with the boys, you know what I mean? With meaning my brothers, the squatty camp boys, yeah. you know? Um, I mean, that, those were my best years as a kid. I love those years, you know? Yeah. But it's not like I'm making the same money. And like right now I'm older, there's more responsibilities, there's more that depends on me. My, like right now when I'm thinking of my things, you know, when we were young, it was easy to know you're doing what you love because you're with around people that you always love being sure. with. When you're older, like the def defining it on your own also, making people see that even work with you and people that don't work with you see it. You know, it's when you're doing it with Squatter, the guys with Squatter said, guys, I spoke with someone from a brand. They don't get, they're like, ah, then they forget it and no one cares and they carry on, <laughs> yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah, goes on. You know, but like now you're on your own and it becomes a little bit harder, but you're making more money now than you were when you were an artist. Yeah. You know, so you cannot say there's failure. You cannot say that like um, there's success, sure. but you got to say, I'm living and I'm loving. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So even now, although I say it's harder, but goddamn, I would not trade my life for anybody else's life. Yeah. And I sometimes, you know, some of the things that I have, that I'm working on, I go, that come in my mind. Yeah. And that's another thing. Things come in my mind and I chase them. Yeah. By the time they start manifesting in life, I go, who, man, how was I even, how did, how did God, how did this you, even whoever you believe, how did they see me? How am I seen to do that? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So even the rap life, the things we did with the boys, um, the things I did online, I am totally like, I don't believe the life that I've lived. 
Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel sorry for who's going to be riding my obituary. It's a, it's a long Because I ain't obituary. done yet. It's a, <laughs> now, when I hear that, that you are making more money now, than you were during the squatter camp days. I'm going, how is that possible? Because you guys were everywhere. You were like the cream of the crop. <laughs> and, and I'm just trying to think as, as, as young men, studio in Leondale to on stage is winning awards, making money. What were like some of the serious money mistakes that you made during that time? It's not like squatter camp wasn't making money at the time, mm. you know. But I, you know, even getting into squatter camp, I got in from my savings. <laughs> you okay. The first squatter camp album, Cutting Joy, the independent album, I, I literally invested most of the money okay. from my savings with Cutting Joy. So I, till this day, I own like over 51% of that master because I put in that amount of money. Sure. Right? The relationship with money, the idea of saving, comes from even primary school. I was always like, selling games, I was selling tapes, mm -hmm. I was, so I've always been like a hawker of some <laughs> sort, yeah. you know what I mean? So I've always been kind of like money conscious. Mm -hmm. um, I think as I got older, I get advice from a financial advisor, long-term investments, I get that type of advice. But I've been fortunate enough that I've always kind of valued money, you know? Sure. And I've always kind of trained myself not to spend and to live a simple life, you yeah. know? I mean, I only bought this jersey for this interview. Okay. You know, but generally I ain't out there buying a jersey like this, you know, like there was another one that was like a little bit more expensive and I was just like, but like I respect the job. So, yeah. I, you know, I mean, the only time I buy clothes is when I'm actually like shooting my shows and like I go, uh, wardrobe budget, then I take the wardrobe budget and then that's when you'll see me buy like. Yeah, now you got rags. nice clothes all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but I, 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 I live I live a simple life. Yeah, you know. I guess the the, the perception of, of of then the music industry even more so hip hop, uh, flashy money life, soft life at the topest highest level that we can, you know. You see the pianos; it's almost like they they lending from the hip hop culture yeah, in terms yeah. of how to look. Uh, maybe let me ask it like this: majority of us uh, see money as success. Is that how you lead your life? No. I see doing what I love as a success. Sure. And I'll always know that I'm the product. Sure. So there's no brand that you can put on top of me that's more expensive than me. Sure. So I ain't about to go spend on another brand that's not spending on me. <laughs> you understand? So for me, you know, as you got to understand, I'm the creator, I'm the product. Yeah. You know, I'm just like the Mercedes Benz. I'm just like BMW. I'm just like those guys. Who, I'm an ideas person like them. Yeah. Just because my idea ain't hit the world like theirs, mm. it don't mean I'm any less. Sure. So I definitely know that them guys from those brands aren't buying other brands. Yeah. Like, because they know that they make, pro I make product, creative yeah. product. And I think that's where, I mean, a lot of creators or artists actually also need to be, need to actually be very, it's one thing to say, I love the art, I love the design, I love this, but you must be careful in becoming less product and more consumer. Sure. You know, I yeah. serve people um, and part of serving people is consistently knowing that like, you are, you, you are the product, you cannot, mm. you cannot be, served by everybody else and you're consumed and you're lost and yeah. you're in debt because you forgot that you're the product. Yeah. We want you to continue making peace. We want you to continue redefining and exploring your heart, your mind and your hands. Because you boldly living it out, you know, whether you get to see it or you don't get to see it, and I think many will attest to what I'm saying, is enabling many others to look at you and go, we may not know how he, day by day, he got there, but it's definitely worth watching. And, and it's beautiful to see. Thank you. Thank you for your signs. Your signs to success. We really enjoyed having you here. Ah, oh, redefine. I think what I took out today is your heart, your mind, and your hands uh, to the best of your ability, to the height of your ability. If you're able to commit to that, redefine success at the different stages of your life, Maybe you'll be sitting here with me and telling us how you got there and sharing your signs. Until we meet again, go out and blossom, trust yourself, define success for yourself, 
and really step out and try get those things. We'll see you soon.